Dear friends and family in Christ, may the love of Christ fill your hearts. May His mercies be with you each and every day. Please bow your heads and let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we give thanks to You that You have been the light that has pierced the darkness of this world, the hope of the salvation to come. Help us each day to recognize You as our prophet, our priest, and our King. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Well, today is the day of the big game. I know some of you really don't care very much, but today is the day of the Super Bowl. Some of you probably didn't even know that, well, it's that time of year again, but for some of you, you're looking forward to seeing the Seattle Seahawks play the New England Patriots. You're looking forward to see who's going to win and who's going to lose. Some of you are probably looking forward to seeing the commercials and how those might be different from last year. In fact, I don't know if you knew this, but over 111 million televisions will be on. At least that was what it was last year. In 2014, 111 million American televisions tuned in to watch the game or at least the commercials. You know, at least as we think about that, whether or not you care much about football or the Super Bowl, you, do pro you are probably aware that there are those who are making predictions as to who will win. Some of you are predicting Seattle, some of you New England. There are those who, in Las Vegas and around the country and around the world, who are putting money on who will win, uh, whether someone will score in the first quarter or the first time they'll score, if it's going to be uh, before halftime, and all kinds of predictions. And isn't that what makes the game exciting? Not knowing what the ending is going to be. No one truly knows who's going to win and who's going to lose, with the exception of God until we get to the end of the game. In those types of th times, in games like those, it's, it's exciting. The unknown is exciting. But not so true for our lives, is it? How many of us are excited about the unknown in our lives? Much more often, we'd prefer to have the known. Many of you have money that you've saved up over the years and put aside for your retirement. You watch the stock market closely. Wouldn't you like to know with full assurance that things will rebound or that you're, you will be taken care of in your retirement? Many of you, you have various doctor's appointments. You don't know exactly what the doctor will tell you, but wouldn't it be nice if you knew what medicines would help or what treatments would bring a cure? Many of us, well, none of us, we none of us know when our last day here on earth would be. But if we did know, wouldn't we try to live life to the fullest? If we did know when our last day was, it wouldn't come so suddenly, would it? No, I think maybe in a game, the unknown is exciting. But in life, we certainly don't feel that way. The unknown in life causes fear, causes concern. It causes us to, to wonder, to ask why. As Moses wrote Deuteronomy chapter 18 today, the people of God, the Israelites, they had a lot of questions about the unknown. They had a lot of questions about what was to come. See, I don't know if you knew this, but Deuteronomy chapter 18 was written right at the end of Moses' life. Moses was writing Deuteronomy 18 as a last will and testament, if you will, kind of letting the people know that they could trust God. Moses had been their intercessor before God for years. He was the one who went up on Mount Sinai on their behalf. But now they had questions, concerns, fears about what was to come. They wondered, will God lead us into this promised land as he promised? And how interesting that is, isn't it? That they had these questions and concerns. How interesting when we go back through just the 40 years that Moses ruled over or ruled, that's the wrong word, led the people. When we think about the fact that when they thought all was lost in front of the Red Sea, God gave them dry ground to walk across. When they questioned God about whether or not they would be able to eat or drink, God rained down manna from the sky, and they said, what is this? Clearly a gift from God. Quail to give them meat when they thought that they were going to be thirsty to the point of dehydration, that they were withering away, probably they weren't so bad off, but if you read the Exodus, you'd think that they were about to die. God brought them water. Even when they were unfaithful, and God sent the serpents to punish them, when they repented,
God sent a bronze serpent or had Moses make a bronze serpent held up on a pole that he would forgive them. Time and again, God was faithful, but did the people count on him? Time and again, God provided for them, but did the people trust him? How often do we look back and we, we shake our heads? It's almost comical when we look at the people of the God's children of Israel, when we see how often he provides for them and how unfaithful they are. It's almost comical because when we think about our own lives, we realize how often God has provided for us and yet how many questions we have. How many fears of the unknown we have. How many of us, if we look back on our lives, and I want you to do this right now, how many of us can look back on our lives and see the way God has provided for us in the past? How he's provided for us when we were hungry or thirsty? How he's provided for us when we thought that all was lost and there was no hope? And How many of you can look back and you see God's hand at work in your lives? Or how about, how many of you can look back and see the way that God gave you strength when you felt like nothing else could? It's amazing, isn't it? It would almost be comical, except we do. We can relate to these, chil- to these children of Israel. We can relate to the fears that they have of the unknown and of the future. We can relate to, the, to those things because we ourselves, at times, live this life asking those questions, wondering, well, maybe we don't say it out loud, but maybe we, we think to ourselves, Lord, how can you get me out of this one? Will you? Lord, how can you work through this? Are you going to? Maybe God's a little too busy. Maybe he doesn't have time. Maybe we don't say those things aloud, but we certainly live our lives at times wondering where God's hand is at work. But time and again, if you think about the way he's provided, we do see we can count on him. Many of you know Fritz Ruger. If you don't know Fritz, he's a member of Trinity and Brawley and when we were doing the Bible studies up there, after one of the Bible studies, I had an opportunity to talk to Fritz. And well, Actually, I, you know me, I talk all the time. But after the Bible study, I was talking to Fritz, and he was telling me that he was listening to KGBA, and the pastor on KGBA had encouraged the people listening to keep a prayer journal. And what the prayer journal would be was that they would keep a, a record of all the th- prayers that they were asking for their friends, for the nation, for our military, And then they would make a mark next to the prayers that were answered and leave blank those that weren't. Fritz said he took up this, well, uh, this pastor on KGBA's uh, challenge. And after a month, he looked back. And every single one of his prayers had marks next to them. So he went another five months. He went six months. He looked back. And every single one of his prayers had marks next to them. Now, whether or not you know Fritz, I do encourage you to ask him about this. Because he, Fritz, to, and he told me that his prayers were answered. He didn't say they were all answered how he expected them to be. But he did see that God answered every one of his prayers. That God not only heard his prayers, but he answered his prayers. This is a real person that you can know. This is not some person out on, in New Jersey or something like that. This is someone right here in the valley who sees God's hand at work. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. Maybe not for a month, or if you could go for a month, to to do the same thing. I'm going to steal this idea from the KGBA pastor, and I suggest keep a prayer journal. Maybe just for a week. Start out with a week. Make a little mark next to the prayers God answered for you. And I think, I know that you will be amazed. Start out with a week and then work towards a month. Work towards six months. And you'll see the way that God hears your prayers. The way that He answers your prayers. But It does require us to be disciplined. It requires us to not just throw up a prayer on our way to church, to not just pray when, well, I need something right now, but it does require that we stop for a moment, that we take that time to commune with our God, that we take that time to lift up to Him the things on our hearts, the things in our lives. You know, sometimes we look at these children of Israel and and we think maybe it was easier for them because they had these prophets. They had prophets who could tell them what was to come. They didn't have such a fear of the unknown. But that's not the case. Prophets rarely told the future. Sure, that's what we see in our Bibles, the the promise of of what's to come. If 
the people are, continue to remain unfaithful. But they had a greater job. Their job was to proclaim God's word to the people. The prophets of the Old Testament were much closer to our pastors today. Their job was to lead the people by God's word, to intercede on behalf of the people, to go between God and his people, to pray for the people, to share God's love and mercies with the people. They weren't fortune tellers, but they did bring the hope of God to God's people. Today, we think about that same role, that same gift. And instead of having some prophet like Amos or Hosea, Moses tells us that we have a greater prophet. The promised prophet. The one who would be like Moses. And while Moses may have just known him as Messiah, we know him as Jesus, our Savior. We know that Jesus, is, we, he, never, he never sat there and told the future, but what he did do is he brought the word to the people. And unlike Moses, he didn't bring the law, but he brought the gospel. He was the gospel. He loved the people. He spoke with authority. How do we know that, Mo, that this was the one that Moses was speaking of, that Jesus was the one? Well, maybe you remember that last phrase that Moses said in 18 verse 15 today. Listen to him. Does that sound familiar at all? It should, because maybe if you remember Jesus' baptism, how did Jesus' baptism end? Behold, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Maybe in a couple of weeks you'll recognize when we get to the transfiguration, when Jesus was transfigured before the disciples, do you know how that event ends? The last voice of God as God speaks from heaven. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. That is who the greater prophet is. Moses was the one who came and brought God's people the law. He led the people, but, G- but he promises a greater prophet in Jesus Christ because Jesus will not only bring the gospel, but he is the gospel. He is the one who has given his life for us. He is the one who has given us salvation. He is the one who has not told us the, 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 what the future will hold, but he has told us the end of the story. That because we believe in him, because we trust in him, that we look forward to a day when we will be with him forever. The hope that we have, knowing that even though we don't know what tomorrow will bring, what the super, even what the Super Bowl score will be, that we do know how the story ends, and that is with us at rest with our Lord and Savior in heaven. And this gives us hope for each day. Because this gives us the promise that our prophet not only heard our prayers, but he answers our prayers, that he intercedes for us, bringing our prayers to our Father in heaven, that God cares enough to know your prayers, that he is with you always. The greater prophet is our Lord Jesus because he prepares a place where our prayers will come to our Lord because we will say them right to his face in eternity. Let us now bow our heads and pray to our Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have heard each and every one of our prayers those which we have spoken, that even those we speak now. We thank you that you are always with us and that you have given us hope and promise. Lord, help us to look forward to each day, knowing that you have given us life and a promise. Although we don't know what tomorrow will bring, we do know that one day we shall be with you. We ask your forgiveness for those times when we have not listened to you. We ask your forgiveness for those times when we have grown content and just trust in ourselves instead of trusting in you. Only coming to you when things don't seem to go our way. Forgive us. Help us always to come to you knowing that you not, that you not only want to, that you hear our prayers, but you want to hear them, that you want to answer them. Lord, that you forgive us for all our sins. Help us to use all of our time to be in communion with you, praying not only for ourselves, but for all those in need. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.